So here we're going to talk about what's called induced electromotive force. And if you remember from SL, we talked about electromotive force and the idea that it's not actually a force. It's just a voltage that's created across two points. And we get to represent it with this cute little curly E. Uh, and so there's no actual force. It's just another way of talking about voltage, uh, but more so when that voltage is created because work is being done on, on electrons to move them in some way. And we're still going to need to know our right-hand rules, so hopefully you remember those. Now, we also talked about the idea that electric fields and magnetic fields uh, give rise to each other, that they interact with each other. And the ability for these electric fields and, and magnetic fields to interact with each other is why we can have this induced electromag electromotive force. Now let's imagine that we have a loop of wire. And the loop of wire is this green square right here and we have some magnetic field that's oriented that's pointing out of the page and so here's our magnetic field pointing out uh, little dots tell us that it's pointing out so the velocity let's assume we're moving this loop of wire from the left to the right through this magnetic field now as it moves through the magnetic field, that magnetic field is going to interact with the electrons in the loop of wire and it's going to cause a force to be exerted on them. So if we so if we set up our right hand and we arrange it so that our thumb points in the direction of the velocity of our electrons, it's just to the right, and our fingers are pointing out of the screen. So point your fingers back towards yourself with your thumb pointing to the right. And if we remember from our right hand rules, we'll remember that the force being exerted on those electrons is coming out of the palm of your hand. And so if you're holding your hand appropriately, you should see your palm is pointing downward. And so that means that the force being exerted on those electrons is in the downward direction, which is going to cause a current to be induced in the wire in the clockwise direction. And mathematically, we can review over here, we know that our EMF is the product of the force being exerted on those electrons times the length of the wire, or the, the length of the uh, wire across which it's being induced. And the only part that matters here is this length here. You know, this That length that's going across the uh, the magnetic field per unit charge, so FL per unit charge. And then this is that magnetic force. Okay, that's the force that's being exerted. And that's QVB. So the charge times the velocity times the strength of the magnetic field. So we have QVBL over Q. And the Qs cancel out. So our induced, electromag uh, induced electromotive force in this situation is VBL, where V is the speed, of course measured in meters per second. B is the strength of the stationary magnetic field. And L is the length of the wire.
Okay. And just uh, to kind of touch on this a little bit more, this part up here be comes from the fact that EMF is going to be equal to the work done per unit charge. Work, as we know, is equal to force times distance. So here we have the electric, the magnetic force being exerted over a specific distance here, uh, causing those electrons to move. Now, if we have multiple loops, that actually then just becomes n, where n is the number of loops times v times b times l. We'll talk about that a little more, a little bit further on. And so here, uh, here's our example. Now, it's important to realize that this induced EMF is from the relative motion between the wire and the magnetic field. And so if the magnetic field is stationary and the wire is moving over it, it's going to induce an EMF. If the wire is stationary and the magnetic field is moving, then you're going to have an EMF set up as well. So in this case, in this diagram, the wire, which is here, whoo, the wire here is actually stationary and this person is moving uh, is moving the uh, the magnet so the the magnetic field is moving but notice if you look at the diagram here and here when the direction changes the direction of the current changes Okay, and so uh, that's important when the direction changes, when the direction of the relative motion changes, the direction of the current changes as well. And so in this case, if we're moving the magnet up, the current is induced down. If we're moving the current, or from the, the current is induced from this post down through around up to this post. If we're moving the current down, that induced current is flowing in the opposite direction. Okay, so the direction of relative motion also determines the direction that the current is induced. We can also describe induced EMF in terms of the uh, change in a quantity that's called magnetic flux per unit time. Now this idea of flux uh, really just relates to the uh, amount of magnetic field that's passing perpendicularly through a surface, through a two-dimensional surface. Okay, and it's given with the by the expression B A cosine theta and in this equation, B is, of course, the strength of the magnetic field. A is the area. It's the area of this surface through which the uh, magnetic field is permeating or penetrating. And then cosine theta is the angle between the two because it's only uh, the amount that's passing perpendicularly through this, uh, through this magnetic field. And so... Uh, if you have uh, an object that's moving through a magnetic field, the amount of the magnetic field that's uh, impacting that object, whether it's a wire or a loop or something like that, is changing as more of it enters the, the magnetic field or, in the case of something like a, a motor or a generator, as that coil spins through that magnetic field. And so the EMF, the induced EMF, in a particular coil of wire is directly related to this change in flux per unit time. And if we're talking about coils, again, we can uh, 
increase the amount of flux by increasing the number of coils. And so if you have some magnetic field, which we'll just draw a couple X's here real quick, and it has some strength. If you have one coil of wire in that magnetic field, it has some amount of flux. Or if you have one loop of wire. If you now add a second loop and a third loop and a fourth loop such that you have this long coil, every one of those coils has that same amount of magnetic field passing through it and because all those coils, all those loops are connected it increases the total flux through that through that object. And this is what we call flux linkage. And so we can find the total amount of magnetic flux through that coil with our same equation as before, BA cosine theta, and then we add in or we multiply in the number of loops. And so adding more loops to the system increases the amount of flux. And as we'll see, it also then increases the change in flux per unit time, which can then increase the induced EMF. So let's look at uh, a couple um, a couple images here real quick. Here we have a coil of wire that's being held in actually let's okay so here we have a coil of wire that's being held perpendicular to a magnetic field and you've got some number of coils of wire here in this position the flux is at its maximum okay so in this position you have maximum flux the coil of wire is perpendicular to the magnetic field so let's see magnetic field is going this way the wire is going that way 90 degree angle cosine of 90 is one. Okay, All right. If we look at it in this direction, let's see where are we at. Down here, you have the coil is in the same plane, it's pointed in the same direction as the magnetic field, and so we have zero flux. Cosine zero equals zero. Okay, so zero flux in this case because none of the magnetic field is actually passing through the uh, loop itself. It's all passing in the same plane as the loop. And what we find and the way this really benefits us is with our motors and so or with our generators rather. So imagine if you we have this coil of wire and it's spinning, it's rotating. You know, the, the image here has it rotating uh, in this direction. As it's spinning, the amount of flux is continuously changing. Here we're at it our max right max flux and then sometime later we're in this position and the flux is zero and as it continues to spin we get back to this position we're a maximum flux but in the opposite direction because our coil is flipped and then we're back to zero and so remember that the whoops let's do this our EMF is equal to the change in flux per unit time. And so if we have more loops and we have more loops in the wire, we have a greater maximum flux. If we and so that from the maximum to zero is a greater change. If we spin the coil faster, we have a, a greater change in flux because it's changing more quickly. 
And so the more loops, the faster our coil is spinning, the larger our area, right? The, the, the larger the area of our coils. That's because remember that flux is equal to BA, right? Uh, we can throw that N in there, NBA. Uh, uh, cosine theta. If we have more coils, if we're a stronger magnetic field, if we have a larger area, those are all going to give us a larger maximum flux. And then if we spin it faster, it's going to give us a smaller time. So the change in flux per unit time is going to be larger. And all of these things are ways that we can generate a larger EMF, which is really just a larger voltage, a greater potential difference uh, in our coil. And this is the principle in which generators work. Okay. Now let's um, look at, uh, actually, again, we talked about a lot of this, uh, but if we have some wire, and we'll, we're right up here, if we have this wire here, and it has some length, L, and it's moving through this uh, magnetic field with some velocity v, we can say that the EMF is BLV. Okay, and we talked about this earlier. B is the magnetic field strength, L is the length of the wire, V is the speed. And if that wire is moved uh, with some uh, some velocity, we know that velocity is, and actually I don't really like how this is, let's move this up here. Uh, we have, EMF is equal to B L V. V is equal to distance over time, B times L times D all over T. Well, in the case of a wire moving through a loop, or moving through an electric field here, this shaded area here that you have, the shaded area is that area covered by that length of wire in that period of time uh, over that distance. And so we can actually simplify this and call this L times D our area and this is just another way, another way that we can show to express this idea of EMF as uh, BA over T. So it's the change BA over change in T equals EMF. So just another way to look at it, another way to derive the same expression that we just talked about. So here we have, again, what we've been talking about uh, previously, where our EMF is related to the change in flux per unit time, but notice here that in our actual equation, it's EMF is equal to negative flux over change in time, and this negative uh, is in there because of what we call Lenz's Law. And the idea here, and we'll, we'll talk about it here as we go along, is that the induced EMF uh, actually generates a force that opposes the change in magnetic flux because uh, the system wants to establish, wants to maintain a uniform magnetic flux. And so uh, as the uh, coil moves through the system, the, if the magnetic flux is increasing, the system sets up a current to actually establish a current that's traveling in such a way to try and decrease that flux to move in the opposite direction.
Now, Faraday's law of induction, which is kind of what all of this is that we've been talking about, simply says any change in the magnetic environment of a coil of wire will cause a voltage, an EMF, to be induced in the coil. And so everything we've just talked about, this is actually what we call Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Uh, and it simply says that by moving this uh, wire, by moving this uh, conducting material through the magnetic field, as that magnetic field changes, there's going to be an induced EMF in the wire, and that induced EMF is going to cause a current to flow. And that induced EMF is equal to the negative rate of change of the magnetic flux. And again, that's that's what we just that's all we just have been talking about here. And again, that negative uh, sign comes from Lenz's law, and Lenz's law states that the induced current will be in such a direction as to oppose the change in the magnetic flux that created the current. This is kind of interesting because what that you know, uh, if you have a, a wire that's moving or you have a coil that's moving in this direction and you have your magnetic field the current is going to flow in this um, in this wire in such a way that it creates a magnetic force that tries to push it back this way or that is opposing the direction of motion because it's trying to stop the change in the magnetic flux and so if the magnetic flux is increasing the force is going to be established to try and cause it to stop so it's going to be uh, in what would be a direction to decrease the uh, the change in or decrease the magnetic flux and if the magnetic flux is decreasing it's going to uh, create a force such that the it tries to pull it back and so as your coil of wire is moving in to the uh, magnetic field actually let's redraw so if you have your magnetic field here and you have your loop moving in the force generated by the current traveling in it is actually going to try and push it back out this way to try and balance out so that the flux stops increasing and as it's passing out so when it gets to here as it's passing out here you're going to have a decrease in the magnetic flux and so the force is actually going to try and uh, push it back in and it's all to uh, resist any change in that magnetic flux and so that's Lenz's law so Lenz's law and Faraday's law uh, really go hand in hand there we go